Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on analysis and design of algorithms. So in this session I shall be continuing with the previous one. The previous one was the tower of NI problem for which I have explained you the logic. In this session I shall explain you the analysis for this particular tower of NI problem. So to carry out the analysis here, this since this is a recursive function and this is a recursive type of algorithm, the approach for analysis is you just first write down the recurrence relation then try to simplify the recurrence relation by substituting suitable values by using the suitable formulas needed here for the simplification process. So let us begin here. So for the analysis first you just write here the number of moves m of n see m uppercase m in bracket n if you are writing it means what this is representing the number of moves required for n disks. So those moves depends only on n that we know very clearly now depends on the value of n, the number of moves. And for our algorithm, for the tower of NI to move n disks, we require what n minus 1 moves plus 1 plus n minus 1 moves. So in the previous session, I have shown those three steps there to carry out the number of moves for three disks, for n disk. So those three steps only you are writing here though. And with the initial condition what? M of 1 equal to 1. M of 1 equal to 1. It means what? To move one disk. Okay. To move. The number of moves required to move. One disk from the source to the source to the destination. You require only one move. So this is the initial condition. You see M into N minus 1 plus 1 plus M into N minus 1. So M into N minus 1 and M into N minus 1 is 2M into N minus 1 plus 1. So you can write down here the number of moves required here to move N disks is 2M into N minus 1 plus 1. So this is your recurrence relation for N greater than 1. If N equal to 1 then M of N equal to 1. This is the recurrence equation you are writing here. Now this part okay this is 2M into N minus 1 you can use the backward substitution in order to substitute here. What is that backward substitution for n? That is for m of n you are writing 2m into n minus 1. If you have to write for m into n minus 1, then it will be 2m n minus 2 plus 1. So in place of this, okay, only in place of this m into n minus 1, I will be writing here 2m n minus 2 plus 1 and this plus 1 will appear as it is. So when you just try to open this bracket, what you will get? 2 to the power of 2 m into n minus 2, 2, 2 into 1, 2 plus 2 this is, okay, plus 1 of this one, previous one. Now further what you have to do is, this once again m into n minus 2, you can use the backward substitution. Here no need to write like this. So for this one, so for m into n minus 2, if you use the backward substitution, you keep first 2 to the power of 2 outside. Only for this part you are trying to write. So it will be 2m n minus 3 plus 1. Okay. And this plus 2 and plus 1 of this one will be as it is. m into n minus 2, you have replaced with what? 2 into m into n minus 3 plus 1. Similar like similar to like this. m into n minus 1. Only this part you have replaced with 2m into n minus 2 plus 1. Same way m into n minus 2 will get replaced with 2m into n minus 3 plus 1. Now further simplify this one. If you open the bracket here 2 to the power of 1 this is 3. Okay. 2 to the power of 3m n minus 3 and this one will be how much? 2 to the power of 2 into 1 will be 2 to the power of 2 only plus 2 plus 1 as it is this 2 and 1 okay further what you can do is see why we carried out backward substitution twice is at this point of time we did not get to know what type of pattern it is going to result into now once we carried out for the second time we got like this the pattern that means now we are sure that it will be always 1 1 is always 2 to the power of 0 2 is 2 to the power of 1 2 to the power of 2, next time it will be 2 to the power of 3 gets included here. Okay, so that way until you find what type of pattern it is going to result into, you can carry out the backward substitution that many number of times. So now finally what I can do is in place of this 2, if you look here, this 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power, this 2 to the power of 
2, 2 to the power plus 2 to the power of 1 plus 2 to the power of 0, I can write it as 2 to the power of 3 minus 1. Why did I choose 2 to the power of 3 minus 1? Because this is what is the mathematical relation 2 to the power of i minus 1 plus 2 to the power of i minus 2 plus 2 to the power of i minus 3 so on 2 plus 1 will give me is equal to 2 to the power of i minus 1. So the same pattern we got here that is why in place of this three terms I can write down 2 to the power of 3 minus 1 this one. So I can write first 2 to the power of 3m n in n minus 3. So the pattern is like this. Now in place of this, I am writing 2 to the power of 3 minus 1 and here 2 to the power of 3 m into n minus 3. Then further, now you can just see in place of like this, you will get 2 to the power of 4 m into n minus 4 plus. So it keeps on increase. So I can write in general 2 to the power of i m n minus i plus 2 to the power of i minus 1. Okay, this much you got here. Now same thing if I have to further simplify, what I can do is, in this i, uh, for i, actually for i, since the initial condition what we have taken is n equal to 1, which can be achieved for i equal to n minus 1. So now wherever is i, you have to replace with n minus 1. So I can write down 2 to the power of n minus 1, m, n minus, i is what? n minus 1 plus 2 to the power of n minus 1, this is minus 1. Then finally what you will get after simplification, 2 to the power of n minus 1 into m, open this bracket, n minus minus plus, minus into minus plus 1, plus 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. Okay, now the next step, let me write here. So I have just moved it to this part of the board now from here to here. Now finally what you will do is you will simplify further 2 to the power of n minus 1 into m. This plus n minus n get cancelled. So it will be 1 here plus 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. Now further m of n. m in this part. Okay, This is one of the equation in our rela recurrence relation. m of 1 is equal to 1. So in place of this we can write down 1 plus 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. Now what you will get 2 to the power of n minus 1 plus 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. Okay. So for the simplification for this will be how much? 2 to the power of n minus 1. So m of n equal to 2 to the power of n minus 1. So this particular algorithm is having an exponential behavior. So if it is an exponential behavior, it is going to take a very long time. We cannot even imagine. So that much time is taken for this algorithm to complete its job. Even for smaller value of n. Just one real world problem that can be modeled using this tower of ni problem can be the movement of data in a computer system. Uh, there if you are considering the process of moving a data from one storage to another storage. So the disk, whatever you have seen in the tower of ni problem, each disk is representing a chunk of data. Also there is a myth related to this puzzle. The myth is there are monks or priests carrying out this puzzle. They are trying to move 64 disks okay, from the source tower to the destination tower and they, it is uh, said that those disks are the golden disks, 64 golden disks. And just imagine if one move takes one second, then to complete this job it will take 585 billion years. So completely unimaginable time. So the time efficiency for this algorithm is here I have already derived this is the number of moves that are carried out in order to move n disks from the source to the destination tower. The time efficiency or the time complexity of this algorithm is we go of 2 to the power of n. Where n is the number of disks in the puzzle. This is an exponential growth here for this algorithm. So this is how you need to carry out the analysis for a recursive type of algorithm. Hope this session is useful to you all. If you find it useful, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye bye and take care.